I'm George McGee. And I'm Kevin Thomas Keel. And welcome to the premiere of Enigmatic Anomalies. While we're waiting for Tim Fasano to arrive and to discuss his uh, Bigfoot research, uh, we thought we'd uh, give a little background information to ears and who we are and uh, what we're going to be doing here. For years we've been interested in the paranormal. Ghosts, UFOs, lake monsters, Bigfoot. With our love of production, it just seemed natural that to make our own program and highlight the hard work of other people and, and everything they put into their investigations, and whether it be ghosts or UFOs or anything like that. And we'll be working with a lot of paranormal investigators, friends and colleagues that we've met along the way. This year, we're joined by Rob Vargas, who brings to our team wilderness expertise and production excellence. So visit our homepage at earshome.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, see us on Facebook. I think I hear Tim coming now. Your EA experience begins now. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Enigmatic Anomalies. Tonight, we're going to interview Tim Fasano, Bigfoot researcher. Tim, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. I'm honored to be here. Well, it's an honor and privilege to speak with you. You've been, you've been hunting this creature in the Green Swamp and in other places for some time now. What inspired you in the beginning to start looking for this thing? Well, first of all, I just want to say that what you'll, what you'll find out in, as you get deeper into the enigmatic world and the paranormal world, um, some people in Bigfoot would take exception to the word hunting because they think that that means you want to go out and kill something. Uh, I have no intention of killing anything. So I like to say that I'm researching or searching. But I have no problem using hunting. It's just that other people seem to have an issue with that. But anyway, you asked me what inspired me. Okay, um, this is going to sound a little unusual, but I think I, I can make perfect sense of it. I've always believed that there may be a Bigfoot. Okay, um, I remember seeing stills from the Patterson film uh, when I was about 12 years old, 1968. It was they were re I, I don't I think it may have been Reader's Digest or maybe. Post magazine, one of the major magazines, I saw the stills from it. And it seemed intriguing. Uh, my brother didn't think it was real, but I thought it may be real. And uh, other than that, I really had never given it much of a thought. Uh, there was an article in a Saga magazine back in 1973. I used to subscribe to that as a teenager because I was interested in things that were strange and weird. And they often had Bigfoot articles in there. And there was one about a particular researcher, we'll, we'll talk about him later. I was 17 years old reading an article uh, about a young man named Tom Biscardi who was up in uh, Alaska, who he and a friend of his had, uh, were using, by today's standards, a primitive form of thermal camera. And they were flying at night just 100 feet off the treetops in a Cessna trying to get a thermal image of a Bigfoot. And this was 1973. So you can just imagine uh, the type of camera that may have been compared to today's technology. I, I never had any clue that 40 years later I would one day meet the man and work with him in the field. But anyway, to be more specific about your question, uh, one day I was listening to the radio to the Michael Medved show. Michael Medved is a political commentator mm -hmm. who is also a movie reviewer. Now, once, uh, once a month on the day of the full moon, he does a program called Conspiracy Day, and the floor is open to various topics, but he'll often have a guest on about a particular topic. And this particular day, he had on a, a, a woman who 
does a blog called Oregon Bigfoot. And I, I can't, her name is, um, I can't remember her name, it just escapes me. It's an autumn, it's autumn something. Um, but anyway, it's not important. Um, it is to her though. But um, she played a series of recordings that were recorded in the Sierra Nevada mountain range probably about 10 years ago. And what these recordings were of was what the, she called reciprocal tree knocking. And I was, it piqued my interest. What, what do you mean reciprocal tree knocking? She said that she believed that Bigfoot communicated with other Bigfoot by knocking a tree limb against another tree. And another Bigfoot downrange would hear that and maybe send another tree knock further down, essentially warning other Bigfoot of the presence of humans. And I, I was very intrigued by that because I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you now have a way where you could actually perform some type of experiment. You could go out in the woods, you could bang on a tree and see if something responded. Well, that piqued my interest. As it turned out, that night I went home and Monster Quest came on and they had a segment about the New York Bigfoot. And they had a professor from a university in Buffalo who, um, oh, Autumn Williams is the lady's name. I want to make sure that I get Autumn that right. Autumn Williams. They had on a, a, a philosophy professor. Now, I majored in philosophy. So my first thought is, what is a philosophy guy talking about Bigfoot for? Well, he talked about archetypes and anthropomorphism. Now, what anthropomorphism is is something that, that's unique to humans and humanity. Humans tend to make physical that which is enigmatic and anomalous to their conscious mind. Uh, without stepping on any religious toes, the making of, of God into the human form of the Christ child is considered an anthropomorphism. The Mormon church uh, believes that God is of physical flesh, but he's of an exalted form, and that humans through uh, eternal progression can reach that point of deity, but would maintain a glorified physical being. Now what the philosophy pro professor pointed out is that that's just, that is a um, psychological security producer that humans do so that they don't feel so alone and so frightened in a terrifying world. And he said all Bigfoot sightings were, was a archetype in the human mind that was transposing this physical form onto shadows or fleeting glimpses that they catch in the woods and the next day their mind is convinced that they saw this physical creature. So I was intrigued that on one hand you had someone claiming that through empiricism, which is part of the scientific process, you could discover a Bigfoot and the other guy saying that it was merely a, a, an invention of the human mind, which would be more towards rationalism versus imperialism, uh, empiricism. And these are the two twin pillars of epistemology. Now, epistemology is the study of knowledge and how humans can acquire knowledge. So I said, this is incredible. I'm, I'm going to try to get into this. So the next day, I went out to the Green Swamp, actually the Dead River area, with a Louisville slugger. And I went out off the road, not very far, and I banged on a, on a tree, three knocks, bang, bang, bang. I realized I did not have to hit it like Derek G or as hard as I could because the vibration just went right through my body. And I didn't get any response. And I banged again, but then I did hear a response and I recorded it. And it was pointed out to me that, and, and I found similar recordings on, uh, subsequently on other websites, that what actually had responded was perhaps a bobcat that I had scared the shit out of. And that was what the noise was. It was not Bigfoot, it was, it was an animal. But something responded. Anyway, uh, I went home and I looked up on the computer, uh, wood knocking Bigfoot, and I immediately got two Bigfoot guys that were on YouTube that had done wood knocking experiments. One was TCSJ or Bigfoot, Tim Stover, and another guy went by the name of First Billy Jack. 
um, that was Ed. Ed has subsequently dropped out of Bigfootery. The, the trolls and the negative comments was just ultimately too much for him to deal with. Um, so he, he vanished. But Tim Stover is still out there. He's actually going to be featured in an upcoming episode of Finding Bigfoot. Um, he's going to, they're doing a reenactment of his actual sighting. But anyway, I didn't mean to go into a very long spiel there. Uh, that's probably not the answer you were expecting, but... That's a fantastic that's, um, answer, though. I mean, this is the inspiration. And that is the... Something sets a man on a certain course. Yes. And it sounds like you definitely went the way to find the thing. As you know, you led us straight to a place where we believe Bigfoot is. And no one, in my experience, has ever been able to nail it like you have. You've really found part of the range of a population of some creature.